Hello, I'm General Wafflos of the Barkers Brigade. Today I'm bringing you a Lili damage build. So Lili is probably one of the most boring and simple characters in the entire game. I have won games where I was not even looking at the screen because all I was doing was walking around holding down Q. She's that brain dead easy. So with this build, you actually sort of do stuff. Yeah. Lily, I think that she's a really good character for somebody that's like first getting into MOBAs. Like if you have somebody that doesn't know very much and doesn't, uh, and you ease them into the game, I think Lily's perfect for that. But she doesn't really teach you very much. She doesn't teach you very many of the game mechanics, so you're gonna have to move up from her, but really all of her skills except for her W, her snake, her cloud serpent, is auto cast. It's smart casted automatically. Your heal will always hit a target that has low health, and your you know, blinding wind will always hit the closest targets, prioritizing champions. So, what do you do to mix this up? You basically don't take any of her healing talents and take all damage talents, and then you try to win. And it's actually kind of interesting. So, to do this, I would only recommend doing this on a team where you also have another support. And then also telling them at the beginning of the game that you're going to be doing this. But as you can see in this lane, the reason why this build works is because Lily has really, really cheap sustain with her Q. Her healing brew. And normally she can just whittle down an opponent. But someone like Thrall with a Lily backing them up, there, there's no way. So I'm basically stuck in this lane until well, I have a chance to leave. So, this build is actually really effective against melee assassins such as Thrall, Butcher, or Illidan. And you may want to consider some of these talents when picking Lily. But you do miss out on one of the best abilities in the game, the Jug of a Thousand Cups. Uh, Jug of a Thousand Cups is one of the things that make Lily. I think that's the only thing that really makes Lily viable is that she has that one ability that's so strong and then the rest of it's just kind of mundane. Yeah. Like, if... If Malfurion didn't exist in the game, Lily would be picked a lot more. But still, here Nova comes in to try to help, but this... They have way too much sustain for either of us to deal with. So next talent choice coming up, this is one where you want the Mass Vortex because it hits more targets and you want to hit as many things as possible because later on that will be buffing up your ability damage. And you can stack it up to 4 simply because you can only hit 4 targets. But you can actually, it lasts for 8 seconds the ability later, but with Kung Fu Hustle you'll actually be able to cast Blinding Wind a lot more often. I'll talk about that later. So. In the early game with this build, just kind of try to survive. Uh, if you can, hook up with somebody that you know and have them play Abathur, because Abathur plus Lily, especially in the early game, is incredibly deadly and effective. Lily's uh, healing will carry her through most of the damage. Abathur will actually provide the damage that she needs. Now Chen coming in, he's a fairly passive warrior, so... We still don't have very much damage, and we can't really dislodge their team. We're gonna come in and try. So now that the Wind Fairy's been active, hit the Blinding Wind. You want to use your Blinding Wind when it's going to be the most effective, because it does only last a few seconds. And you don't want to always use it just for damage, but it is really it is going to be your key damage ability. Now. When you're playing this build, keep in mind that you're going to be very mana hungry most of the time, and you should kind of hold back on your abilities until an actual fight breaks out. Or else you're going to be in a situation where you just don't have any mana for the team fight, and therefore you don't contribute because your auto attacks are pretty weak. Just coming in, trying to take down Lily. She's fairly low, and she will be taken down by the Blinding Wind. Thrall coming back in. Well, he'll stop us from taking that temple over. And they are able to get the Dragonite in the middle lane. So I'm going to need to go and help with that. So level 7. Uh, Lightning Serpent. 
Like, he just... This is a really committed build to doing damage, and... So I take Lightning Serpent. Usually that ability is only good in certain situations where you take other abilities. To take, uh, the Healing Serpent and the ability for a Serpent to last longer. Which is also another build choice. It does a lot of damage, but also provides a lot of healing. This build provides almost no healing. The healing is just kind of a bonus. And you'll actually see me a lot of times not even use my healing, simply because mana is such an issue. Like, not picking up Conjure Pursuit hurts a lot. And the fact that you need to spam your abilities in teamfights means that, well, you run out of mana. Normally as a Lily, everything that you use is situational. You hold down Q, you hit Blinding Wind only when the enemies come up close and start doing auto attacks, and you just kind of put your Cloud Serpent on your tank. You know, here you want to be initiating fights with your E. You want to make sure that you're using it as much as possible. But also try and... Uh, try, if they have a melee assassin like they have Thrall, maybe you need to hold off a little bit more. Simply because uh, his auto attacks are so important to him. Another aspect of our team, though, this is a quick match. And our only assassin is Nova. And then we got two warriors and two supports. And neither of the supports ended up going for a healing support role. Which I don't think matters that much. But they're just able to, because they have two specialists, they're actually able to just completely split push this entire time. Very safely because we can't come and kill them. Normally they'll just be able to walk away from whoever comes up. Nova's our only threat. Currently. Another reason to build damage. So, uh, I'm going to choose Water Dragon because you want more damage with the damage build. Water Dragon's weird. It's another smart cast ability where it hits the closest target, but also hits in an AoE. But also it has a delay that lets the enemy know it's coming. Like there I hit Thrall and Murky, but... Overall, it wasn't important, and didn't do very much damage, and then I ran out of mana. Yeah, and you can see how effective Lili's, the enemy Lili's ultimate was, the Jug of a Thousand Cups, versus the Water Dragon, which did very little. It, it's something you kind of have to have your team synergize a little bit with. Again, Abathur is a phenomenal choice to choose with this build because it fills in the gaps of your damage and gives you even more survivability, which Lili really doesn't need. As Lili already has the uh, fast feat, that's her trait, where any time that she takes damage, she gains a uh, 10 or 15% movement speed. It was changed fairly recently because... You were able to just walk out of too much, and they scale it back a little bit. But that passive usually keeps you safe, and then when you have shields on top of that and spike bursts... Like, in this game, I'll actually show off the effectiveness of that talent very well. Yeah. But, for now, just kind of try to get together with the team. Our team really sucks by themselves. Nobody can really do anything. We need everybody together. Yeah, but one thing you'll see throughout this game, too, is that Leoric has that by maximum health percentage attack. And you'll just see our tank just stand in it. And he's going to get way more damage off than he deserves. And here, Thrall doesn't stand much of a chance. Hit him with the blind to make sure he can't do anything. Yeah, I... Like, anytime I play Lily, I... I mostly do it just to have an easy win. Like, this... Oh, uh, this was good. Even though you didn't build for healing, you can still sustain people pretty well against, like, tanks. Even Leoric, who has fairly high damage, most of his damage is in his abilities. So Monk was able to trade despite him having the Iron Fist. But now they got both temples again. Leoric's gonna be back very soon. Leoric and Murky together is actually horrifying. Here, just blind them. Put the water dragon out. Yeah. 
another, that's again the problem with Water Dragon is you can't target it, it just hits whoever's closest. And Murky moved up on the Zebo fell back so the Water Dragon did really nothing. I don't even think Murky died. Like if Murky dies, who really cares? Uh, it's not looking good for our team because really we're not grouping up. We're not having that communication that we need to uh, move forward. Like, Murky's the only one consistently dying. That and Leoric. Oh, he killed Thrall once, but... You know, one thing we have managed to do, though, is maintain the level. Uh -huh. There is no real level gap. We're pretty equal. Here, Murky moving in. Just gets completely destroyed immediately. But then Nova moves up into Mazebo. Monk coming down. And, well, Water Dragon coming out. And now I'm at very low health. Murky gets the Dragonite and all the confusion, and as Lili, you should never be afraid. Like, unless they specifically have a gap-closing burst assassin. Uh, Dragonite's saving me. You shouldn't really be afraid, because you can usually just walk away from everything, and you have long enough range on your abilities to still contribute to fights. There again, getting put in a better position by the Dragonite. But that fast feat just makes me want to stay in the fight longer in the queue. The healing brew is sustaining me enough to actually stay in these team fights. And it is healing my team sometimes when I'm not horribly low. Then Murky pops out and we all just jump on him. And he decides to just do a ton of damage to Nova because his life does not matter. Then, as I recall, Joanna moves up and gets in a fight with Leoric and dies horribly. They're just moving forward so the monk has a target to jump to. Chen getting comboed by Murky and the one and the trickle in is really happening in this game. Uh, here I decide that I just need to get this moon well. I, I need the mana really badly but it's more important for me to stay here. Like, our team just isn't working together at all, and their team is starting to. Originally they weren't, they were just overpowering us because their heroes are better individually. But now they're actually grouping up and doing objectives and we're still not. And as you can see with the difference in our death timers, we're really strung out in these deaths. Like, it's not like we're losing team fights and we're just losing people. It's like somebody keeps walking in and then dying. We really need everybody in these fights to contribute or else we just won't pass them. Another thing is that their Lili has the Jug of a Thousand Cups and if nobody stops that, there's no way we can win the team fights. Crusader walking back into the Murky. The Murky Pufferfish will take a ton of damage and get taken down. Chen going into his ultimate will try to get something done, but Murky does block the last shot of the triple tap that would have secured Leoric's death. And now we're just kind of chasing him for no real reason. Like, we weren't going to catch him. They're all coming in, trying to do some stuff. I just cast a water dragon, hits Nazebo. Really didn't matter who was hit. So now that I have the Blinding Wind gives ability power, you always want to make sure you cast the Water Dragon after you've already cast your Blinding Wind because it does more damage, more ability power. And you also want to make sure you cast your Serpent after you cast Blinding Wind. So, like, EWQ, E, or EWR, or ERW. It's the ordering in which you want to do to get the most damage out. And now that I'm giving Cloud Serpents to myself as well, and they have the Bounce Attack, it's actually really it's really effective here was actually 100% my fault that I died here I walked right back into a zombie wall that I was out of that was my bad and to note that I haven't died up till this point just shows how effective Lily is at just staying alive in team fights and how safe she is again 100% beginner character but she does have She's a really good beginner learning character, but she she's also able to actually stand up in ranked mode as a viable healer. And that's something you don't often see with 
characters that were almost intended to teach people about the game and the mechanics. Now, uh, we got Chen saying that it's over and kind of bringing down the team. So you know that people are starting to lose morale if they haven't already lost it. But I just want the team to group up a little bit. It may be a little bit too late now, considering that they have the three level advantage on us now. But we gotta still keep trying. Comebacks are what this game is all about. But fighting Leoric is not the way to have that happen. Water Dragon will slow Leoric. Lily was taken down, having her ult cancelled. And then I just get Octo grabbed by Murky. The damage was not enough to kill me. And I just try to walk away, but the slime was too much for me to handle. That death really wasn't my fault. I was just kind of dying in a team fight, which is well. That's the one way that you really die in team fights is you get crowd controlled and then you get killed. Usually, you just walk away, but you can't walk away if you're stunned for three seconds. Thanks, Mark. Now Chen, I guess he's just trying to do something. Trying to run these turrets out of ammo, or... I don't know what he's doing. But he is taking down towers, and we have not done that at all. Meanwhile, Nazebo is pushing top with Leoric and Murky. The obnoxious combo that does not stop. And Chen, he's just gonna be pushing mid, I guess. This was his plan. So now the team's respawning trying to deal with this push, but like, we're going to lose this keep, and now we have all keeps down, catapults in all the lanes. And it does not look good at all. Here I got body blocked, but then I got out, I don't know. Just trying to do anything to slow and damage the orc, and he will go down. Monk putting out a lot of damage. Now that the shrines are spawning, Chen dies underneath the enemy's fort to Thrall. Yeah, I guess he's making sure that it's over instead of grouping with us for a chance, but you know. With the underdog mechanic, you can already see that we closed that level difference and we're only one and a half levels behind. Here I didn't know that Murky was up here. Murky's like the only person I'm afraid of simply because full health and pufferfish combo. Dead. There's really nothing I can do about that, except for have not gone up there and just stayed with the team. But if it was any other person, it would not have been an issue. If it was their Lily, we would have just had to walk away because there's, I can't really kill her fast enough. And now that all four of us are dead, uh, Chen says how things are bad, despite him dying under a fort. Yeah. I almost consider not uploading this, but... I actually had a, a lot of trouble uploading some videos, or getting some recordings. Like my next video for Abathur. I don't want to talk about this in the Abathur video, but I'll talk about it here. Uh, I just kept getting in games where Abathur relies so much on his teammates, and there was just games where there would be people, like there was this Thrall that most people had two deaths, and he had twelve. Uh, it, it's just games like that that are just so horribly imbalanced to what is actually what you can actually do you know matchmaking in a nutshell as you can see i actually did a lot of damage nova is still doing most of the damage but i was able to uh, overpass karazim even with a full damage build from him that's pretty good the healing was pretty terrible but that's to be expected let's just go over the talents one more time for the build Gale Force for more damage on your Blinding Wind. You need to hit more targets so it can buff your abilities even more. Lightning Serpent, it's more damage. Water Dragon, it's the damage ability. It's kind of It kind of works sometimes, not all the time. Surging Winds, this is why you want your Blinding Wind to hit four targets. It gives you more ability power per target hit. Uh, you want it, you get a Cloud Serpent with the sidekick. And then Kung Fu Hustle is really good because... You can actually cast Blinding Wind multiple times, even though it can only stack up by four. It's still really good to have. Anyway, that's going to be it for this video. Till next time.